Hey folks, Jonathan again. I was able to get some of these uh as you can see they got different thick or different shims. There looks like it's three or four of them there. Maybe three or four here. There was one on each of the others, but uh rollers are off. Really heavy duty rollers. Uh they're not toys, that's for sure. But this is what I was planning to do. Something about like what you see here. And uh having four on it. We're gonna leave a gap in between. If I make my pins right, and this is about an inch and three eighths, and uh, what we'll do is probably go uh, inch and three eighths on this, and maybe two inch on this, and then bore these holes two inch, or maybe you know inch and three quarter or something like that. But uh, that way we can leave a good lip on it, and. Uh, we may even step these twice, maybe inch and three eighths here, put a lip on it that is, uh, let's say inch and three quarter and then go back down to inch and a half, put it through an inch and a half hole, leave one inch so it can come out all the way to the edge. And uh, that way we can, you know, press them on just like they were. It looks like they had some kind of, some kind of Loctite or something on them here. And uh, they actually came off a little better than I thought they were going to. And uh, what I want to do, like I said, you know, these, as you can see, have got some shiny spot on the side. So, you know, they, they actually run up in the side anyway. And these will fit, you know, really good up in there. And uh, you really don't want them tight in there hitting both sides because when it's rolling this way, it's backwards than if it was up and rolling this way. So you can see it's going clockwise and it's going counterclockwise. So, uh, you know, it's going to work out just fine. And I'll show you what I was meaning about putting my slots on the side and then adding the side wheels in. And like I said, I'll probably just put them out flush even with these. And uh, if any far, that won't be, you know, sixteenth of an inch or less. But I will show you on the, the other trolley. Okay, folks, you can see how this trolley is made. This is in one inch, just like what we're using. And this is basically the same setup, except we're going to use four rollers. But you can see they actually slotted, it looks like it's probably one inch tall, maybe two inches long, maybe two and a quarter or something like that. And uh, they've got it on a pin, got the one side of the pin surface flat, and that would be the way to adjust it to the side. And then uh, they've got it bolted on, you can see the, back, the bolts here. So we've got one here with grease fitting and everything. We've got one on this side, and that's all they ran on this, but what we want to do is run four of them. You know, we're going to run two rollers, one here, uh, I'm sorry, one roller, one side roller, two rollers, one side roller, and then the other roller. But I believe that these ones are the same size. So if they're the same size, we can use these and take them off and then just make two pins, machine the sides down like this one, and uh, we'll be able to fit them in where we need them. And we'll just do it just like they've got it here, just just a little heavier duty. I mean, four rollers instead of two, and two of these side rollers instead of one. And uh, I'm sure that that's going to be adequate to, to hold up what we want. And you can see they've got it welded on them plates. And what I wanted to do, because we're not having a cylinder here in the way, we'll weld it to our big plate, and then we'll gusset it from here down. And that'll keep it you know, good and steady from bending this way you know, popping a weld or anything like that. And uh, I think that's gonna do us, you know, for for strength wise. And, and I'll probably get this trolley out and then actually check and see how high this is out. Because, I mean, you can actually see it was touching, but it wasn't even touching enough, you know, to, uh, to get into it any or anything like that. So, uh, you know, it's sort of just gonna be a helper and uh, the other one, I think, I hope the other one's in good shape. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're gonna be able to do that and get by with that. But we'll go ahead and get these apart, get these rollers off, and uh, I think we're gonna end up with four extra of the big rollers, and then we'll use all the small ones and then I'll be able to duplicate that, you know, two pins like that for our extras. So that ought to, to work out fine for us. But I will uh, 
get on it and show you more. Hey folks, walking back to look at the uh, wrecker bed and walk by this and uh, kind of get a chuckle every time I do. I built this back when my son was about, I think he was about 12 years old and he's 24 now. So it's been a little, about 12 years ago. Uh, everybody, the Orange County Chopper bikes had came out and uh, everybody was getting them and we really didn't have the money to buy him one so I built that for him and uh, the seat's off of it now but that's another one of the deals where he he wouldn't sell it for anything he likes it I used a uh, spare tire off of a off of an old car you know one of the mini spares made the rim and 10 speed parts and just whatever I had but I always liked that bike and uh, it's pretty neat Old chopper but getting ready to show you a few things on the on the wrecker bed okay folks I'm gonna try to maybe back up a little bit and you can see what I'm dealing with on this this is the bottom side of our rotator bed the original bed that was on our fit seven international I'll turn you sideways here that rear outrigger it actually it extends out here and of course it extends out up there and it's extended out a little ways. It's not out very far, but that is what we're going to cut off of this bed. And I actually thought about using this subframe, but uh, it's really not built real heavy. And I think it's probably it's probably only an eighth inch, and it's it's just bent steel. And I mean, I know they do it as structural, so you know they lighter steel. But you build it right, you know, you don't need as heavy. But uh, I just don't like it for what we're doing, so we're not going to use that subframe. Uh, you know, you can sort of weigh whether it's worth doing all that cutting on or not. And uh, it's just not worth it to me to do that much cutting. So uh, we're going to cut out this back section. And it has rained for about four days straight, I believe. So no better time than the present. This is going to be our center outrigger. This is actually going to go behind the cab uh, under the frame and it's going to cross you know right about where the transfer case is on our truck and uh and we'll have plates coming up from it on the sides bolting into the side of the frame and then coming on up to the subframe to bolt it in but this is going to take quite a bit of cutting to get out and get it cleaned up like we want it it's pretty pretty heavy unit but uh the slowing gear on this one had, had actually held water it didn't go have a hole all the way through so it set for a lot of years and rusted up, so the slowing gear was bad. And you can see the way that they had actually done some welding. And they put some block bearings on it right here, that they had some trouble with it. And they used this gear reduction box. And I mean, this this gear reduction box would work good, except for the fact that they had welded it down on the bottom. They had busted it loose. So I think I've I've got another idea of what I want to do on it. And uh, and the boom was a little bit warped on this unit, and they had put an extension on it about 10 foot and instead of sticking out the back of the truck they would swing this thing around and stick it out the front of the truck and had it piece on the bumper and they used it for pulling well pipe and they sort of hurt it but you can see what I was talking about on right here's our pivot point right here's our cylinder and so everything from here forward all the way on this boom is all overhang and I don't know why they built it that way. I don't like it. I do like the safeties. They've got safeties on this around the slowing gear in case it was to, you know, something was to happen, it couldn't come loose. And uh, Garwood is the company that built this. And uh, like I said, it was a Navy truck. So but we're gonna get these outriggers off. And uh, that's what we're gonna use. Them are fabricated. I can see that you know they rolled two pieces of steel or bent two pieces of steel and then welded them down to make their inside. But uh, they worked good. You know we we'll still take the cylinders out and check them out, and then we'll have square tube outriggers on the on the sides of it. So we'll go ahead and get some vehicles moved here where I can flip this stuff over and go ahead and get at it. Show you more. If I want to buy a vow, I don't see Vanna nowhere. Right. 
Okay, folks, what we're going to try to do is go ahead and cut these bolts and uh, get them off. And then, we're, of course, we're going to have to, uh, the way this is going to come out, we're going to have to get rid of this, this oil line going to the gearbox or this oil fill. And that one, that's the drain, I guess. Uh, so we have to cut them. And then we'll have to get the PTO shafts out of the way so we can drop this. Well, we're not really going to drop it down. I think we're going to get it unhooked. And then what we're going to try to do is come in here with the with my forklift and pick the bed up off of it. I hope it's going to work that way. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to stick you all in a bucket. You're going in the bucket. It's wet. And... Uh, We'll see if we can keep you dry in there in case it starts raining. All right, no gun over. Folks, you ain't coming in. I'll show you what the problem is here. I probably should have just went ahead and cut them to start with. But uh, our bolts, you can see they've picked up a good ways. But they go all the way through and down in. And it's just, this thing has to be picked up even and so far. So what I'll do is I'll take the torch and run down in there. And I'll actually just cut some of them bolts off close. And uh, it should solve our problem. I mean, we've got it loose. But... Uh, these ones here I may go under and pop them off. Matter of fact, I might get the forks back up under it, get a little support under the bed itself and pop them off real quick and we'll go ahead and see if we can get this thing off there before I tear something up, which I've been known to do. All right, let me get you back in your bucket. It's starting to rain a little bit. I hope you don't mind being in a bucket. I could just leave you out here to get wet, so we'll try it.
the bed and this is where the locks went down and locked the suspension out on that truck there's the pump the other pump that ran the outriggers we just ran that pump three control valves one for it extended them in and out and one for each you know side to lower it down had its own little tank there and then of course the control valves come out the back it had a place for a sling of some sort so you could tow with it but uh, like I said these Outriggers here, these will come off, but uh, we're just going to get to cutting here and see what we can figure out. The old deck is in pretty good shape, but, you know, a man could, you know, mount a slowing gear there and the boom and build his bed off the sides of this and actually keep this deck and everything, but uh, it's not what I want to do. I mean, it would work and it would save me money in the long run, but, you know, uh, it's just not not what I'm going for it's not the look I'm going for but also by the time you get you know be able to do all your work that you need to do under this bed uh, the outriggers the way I want to do them and you know every, everything else especially like rear outriggers and stuff I'd be better off to cut the deck back off of it before I have done it so uh, but like I said this was the front of the bed that was the back of the bed and that was the outrigger so we're gonna get to cutting on them while it's still wet I really just wanted to get it away from them weeds and the edge of the woods and stuff. I mean, I didn't want to, uh, I don't want to set the woods on fire for sure. But now it is nice and wet here. It's been raining for three or four days, so, or five days, or flooding. And uh, I checked my deer cam a little bit ago, and there was a catfish swimming by. So, But we're going to get to cutting. I'll show you more. Okay, folks, it's getting really dark on us here. And we'll go ahead and show you what I, where I'm at. I'm actually cutting it across. We're going to get it off, get the piece of it off, and then uh, we'll be able to move it and move the move our bed back out of the way and get it, get it all cleaned up. Got it cut loose, as you can see. You know, I just cut the back section. Uh, it's going to be hard to see in this dark, but, but um, you know, it's not in too bad a shape. Uh, we'll get it around on the concrete now. We got it loose, and We'll go ahead and get it all cut loose and cleaned up, and then I'll extend them out and show you how far they extend and all that stuff. So, But that'll be next time. And I uh, appreciate everybody subscribing and watching, commenting, liking, and I guess disliking if you don't like it. But, uh, you know, I, I do appreciate everybody. And until next time, bye.